Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alarian, uh, and I work in a company that works on uh, that creates uh, uh, stores, internet stores. We work on e-commerce mostly. Uh, I'm glad to see everyone here. And uh, today I would like to talk about a particular uh, problem that we have solved in our company. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to share as my solution with you. So uh, the problem is sometimes as a front-end developer, you need to get some information from uh, another server, not your own server. Uh, you need to get information, for example, from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, well, almost any API. Uh, and uh, it's not your server. It's not on your domain. And cross-domain AJAX uh, requests are forbidden by default. Well, uh, so what can we do with it? Uh, every browser, uh, every modern browser supports uh, cross-origin resource sharing, uh, simply course uh, a policy. But it's set, by the, uh, it's set to de deny by default uh, in almost all so uh, services. So you can't use it. Uh, so how many of you are front-end developers? Uh, please raise, raise your hand. So. About a half, yeah. So you must have encountered this problem. And the common solution is to use JSON-P, uh, a padded JSON. Uh, if the server that you are querying it supports it. Okay. JSON-P is uh, is a padded json we uh, we simply enclose uh, a function uh, the server response into a function and then insert it into our dom and it gets executed and provides us the result but uh, this way we have no control uh, if something ha uh, goes wrong so we have no control over uh, errors. We don't know when it happens. So uh, we know on, uh, our code can react only when the result is received. If, if it's not received, we can, cannot do anything. And, and I have created uh, a table that compares uh, my solution. Well, uh, sorry. Uh, My, uh, I forgot to mention about my solution. That's why uh, I, I'm a bit of a, a bit of ahead. Uh, my solution uh, is to create a, pro a simple proxy in Node.js that will would uh, send the data uh, to your uh, own code in the front end. So basically, you are com communicating with a server uh, with your own server, but it's small and it, it serves as an intermediary to, uh, between uh, the data and uh, the front end. Uh, okay, so. Uh, if we compare these two approaches, uh, JSON-P uh, is simple. If the server supports it, you don't need to add anything. You just uh, write the code in jQuery, for example, and you mentioned that you want to get the JSON-P and you get it, but you can only get it. For example, if you want to send it, you will not be able to do it uh, because JSON-P supports only GET requests. Uh, JSON-P uh, uh, results are injected in code, so we have a, a possible security problem. And uh, something uh, can go wrong and uh, uh, someone can inject. Uh, for example, if, the, if another server was, was hijacked, uh, we could get a malicious code this way. And we uh, can uh, handle errors only indirectly. Uh, by uh, waiting for the results. If there are no results, we don't get anything. While proxy can uh, get, post, put, delete, and the results are parsed, so it's secure. We parse the results first, and we, we are sure we got what we need. And we, it, it has a reliable, regular uh, error handling 
just like a regular uh, ex uh, AJAX request. So to build a proxy like that in Node.js, I would like to recommend to use a Happy framework. Happy framework is a framework like uh, the more popular Express uh, framework. It was developed by Walmart to use it in, in their own production system, uh, and it's uh, quite popular now. Uh, and in my opinion, it's uh, quite stable. Even I think even more stable and more uh, and better documented than Express. It was created by Iran Hammer. Uh, he has a very interesting Twitter and blog, and I would. Uh, Happy to recommend you to read it. So we'll, to create a, a simple proxy in Node.js, we would need uh, six steps, six simple steps. Uh, I would go, br I will go briefly over the, uh, the steps and then come back and show you the details. So step one, we uh, require happy and rec. Rec uh, it's, is a part of happy family. It's uh, a part of Happy Family. Uh, it's a client utility for HTTP requests. Uh, then we declare, uh, create a new Happy server and uh, specify uh, the port we're going to use. Uh, here, uh, you can see here, uh, we can either take uh, an environment variable or uh, set it to 3000 by default. Then we declare a method. So, um, in this case, I would uh, want you to. Uh, I would like you to, to show to uh, how can how we can get Instagram feed. It's a quite popular um, task. <laughs> so uh, here we uh, declare server method. So we get Instagram and uh, we specify a function that will do it. Uh, I will show it in the next uh, step. And we say it should be cached. Well, Instagram feed uh, changes not so often. Uh, uh, we can set a, a cache for, for about an hour. Uh, I guess it, it would work. So uh, this is the function that would actually fetch uh, the Instagram feed uh, from the source we specify. Well, I, I've decided to, uh, sorry. I've decided to omit the actual request line because it doesn't fit into the window. So we use rec to get uh, Instagram, we uh, handle errors, and we go to step five. Here we describe a route. So if our server, uh, if we write uh, local host slash Instagram uh, dot JSON, we will get response from our server. And here we describe this route. The method, the path, and the handler function. Well, uh, here the handler function uh, simply uh, sends the, the request to the server method that we've defined earlier. And we also this is the most interesting part. We, in config, we define that a course is true. So our server would uh, re reply with allow all course policy for any request. We can specify uh, a domain here, our own domain, so that uh, no one else would get uh, that feed. But it, it's flexible this way. The Instagram feed is public, so we don't care about it. Uh, we can send it to uh, anyone who requests it. And we also uh, declare uh, cache parameters for the browser. And the final step, we start the server and wait for requests. <laughs> Iyush. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to talk about cache next. Uh, that's the, in my opinion, that's the most important part. Uh, Instagram feed doesn't uh, 
doesn't update very often, but we have a limit uh, in request uh, to Instagram API. So, uh, it's about 50,000 requests per minute, but it can be reached. In, in fact, uh, one of our clients has reached it, and that's why we came up with this solution. Uh, so, by caching uh, on our proxy server, uh, we now practically never reach uh, Instagram API limit and uh, provide and quickly provide uh, cache results uh, results from cache. Sorry. Okay. So we get to step two. Here we. We've declared it. Yeah, it works. Uh -huh. uh, great. Uh, uh, okay. So first, we uh, declare uh, that uh, the cache will expire in uh, sixty minutes. Uh, that's a, an hour. It, it's all, all right for Instagram. And two more declarations, stale in and stale tim timeout, um, solve the problem when uh, the cache timeout has been reached. So there is a pause, for example, uh, browser uh, requests uh, information from our server but the cache has already expired uh, and we need to uh, get the data first to provide it to uh, to the to the client and by uh, adding these two declarations stale in and stale timeout we declare then when uh, 100 milliseconds passes uh, We've sent the re request to Instagram, so we're waiting for results. But uh, the timeout is so small for, for that request. So uh, our server uh, uh, once again sends the cached results that uh, it has right now. And then uh, updates its own cache, so the next result is, more, uh, is fresh here. <laughs> So uh, this, in practice, uh, provides uh, almost immediate, immediate response from our proxy in almost any situation. Plus, we define cache for the browser, so if we say the data is valid for one hour, and we set the privacy to uh, attribute to private, so that it would not be shared uh, between uh, uh, other uh, websites, other tabs. And we start our server. Okay. Uh, I've included sources uh, on GitHub for my example. You can see the entire setup and uh, you can launch it simply by typing npm install and, and npm start. Uh, you can read more about course policy in a HTML5 rocks tutorial. And uh, I would urge you to uh, take a look at a happy, happy website because it's a very reliable and, uh, st and mature solution for Node.js uh, middleware. Uh, and uh, there's a video in the fourth link, why we chose Happy, uh, Jacob Chapel from Walmart Labs actually explains why they chose, a, uh, have, uh, chose to create Happy and use it. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs> See you next month on uh, Warsaw JS.